those areas we talked about, those colder areas, um, it's all physical. That doesn't mean they have a cold core existing with cold water, but it's all physical. Placing them in an EVG class would not be that on yeah. suggestion. On the other hand, if you're unsure, all right, and you've looked at other areas, it appears to be, for example, if you've done a good social history, a good adaptive, and done other um, behavioral assessment measures, and it appears to be more of an anxiety problem, um, oppositional defiant, um, some of the other disruptive behavior disorders that we've identified, not autism, then you can measure like brokenness. But it, it, it is a complicated. Yeah, it's very sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, it is. But if you do a very good comprehensive developmental assessment for autism, including a lot of the autism measures I've mentioned, and again, those core areas are significant. At a clinical level, talking probably talking autism. <coughs> More likely than not autism. Again, it doesn't mean the child has not got coexisting problems. But I mean, now you're also talking about an IEP. So, what an IEP best meets that child needs. An IEP is supposed to try to replace the so, so now what is the child's needs based on your assessment? The kid is, you think, autistic, eligible for autism. Look at that IEP. Where is that child best placed? Probably not an EVP class. But there are children that, that have coexisting um, ASDN or the it. And, you know, they do have both diagnoses. Oh, yeah. I don't know which room would be best for their needs. Yeah, from a DSM perspective, um, I've seen kids with four or five diagnoses. Right. It drives me crazy. Right. So, what our responsibility is, again, in terms of the eligibility of the school. Which is the best diagnosis for the class? And that depends on our evaluation. Right. Remember, IDEA and DSM. Right. And of all the DSM diagnoses and diagnoses, whatever. It's our responsibility to determine whether the child meets eligibility under one of those 13 categories. And again, if you do a comprehensive developmental assessment for autism that we talked about here, you're probably going to get the best idea and you're your best, you're get your best outcome. So is it autism or is it not? You're probably not right. I think you're the right answer. You should. Do the administrations always accept <coughs> your right answer? What is the administration? Yeah. Do they accept your right answer and say, you know, this student really is, yeah, you know, EVD, but he also has autism, so we're going to. Know, do they accept what you say as would be the best place? I think it, I guess it depends on what school you're in. Okay, in but your experience. In my experience, <laughs> my experience, most in, most administrators will accept it. Now this is from child study team, whatever team we will yeah. use, to accept that team's recommendation. And by the way, that team's recommendation includes your parents. So most most administrators are sensitive to that fact. There was a group of individuals in that, including the parent. The parent agrees, everyone agrees. We have an IEP that can address the placement. I think most of them agree. I would hope so. Doesn't mean they do. Well, so you get this one thing here. I don't know if you've seen this. Oh, okay. He met one individual with autism, he met one individual with autism. You know, and we, we talked about all autistic kids today and whatever, and we kind of talked in generalizations. And you know, the message here is when you sit down to evaluate a kid, it's all 
different. We know that. But it's fine differently. Also important to keep in mind that every time you sit down and do an evaluation, you start to do autism. I'm looking at the difference. I like the last one. And I'm going to do one last thing for selfless promotion. Okay. A lot of the things we've talked about today can be found in my two books here. Uh, this one here is the most recent. This one I edited for the American Psychological Association. Another one of those. This one has a um, Pretty good appendix with some forms that you can use. Okay, some samples, some forms, definitions, so forth and so on. Uh, the others are, are chapters that were written by some uh, university professors, some highly respected professionals in the world as well. So um, I have no problem. And links and resources. Um, you had a handout. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming. All of you should have received the handout. Um, it was sent electronically. <coughs> so if you know anyone, let me know and I'll send it to you. When was it sent? It was sent this week. Uh, but I'll do this Give me your email address afterwards and I'll send you a copy. Um, just a couple resources. This is a flyer that's on the table. These are some upcoming events. If you, if you work with, um, with children or assess or interview um, children, children, we're doing a conference on um, November 8th, and that's on here. Also, some other resources. This is a copy of the supports and resources. We will go in, do observations, work with teachers. We'll be happy to do training. All of our services are free, and this is just a brochure for schools. And then I just want to give you a plug for our Little Owls program. Um, this is for parents who are uh, with children newly diagnosed or identified. Um, and so we would hope that you would share this information also. Um, Alex, um, if you, any of you are interested in, we have a mentoring program that's funded through the United Way. We also have funding for the Treasure Coast. If you would um, be interested in volunteering as a mentor or you know anyone, um, Alex is the person. But thank you very much. That was excellent. Thank you.